Welcome to Monster Man. First time in the Belfry, Jack Hampeasy. Help, I'm trapped. <laughs> he might be trapped under something heavy before this episode <laughs> is done. Because as you can see, there's a lot of shit up here. I can't believe this stuff is real. <laughs> I thought it was all green screen. <laughs> yeah, I green screen junk all around me. But we're back together. First time since Halloween. Yeah. It's been a long time. Jack is drinking because if this is our new year. You're drinking the champagne of beers. Miller Highlight. Miller time. I have a little jam juice from Captain Lawrence. Uh, jam juice, for me, if I drink three of these, it's like that pen from Men in Black. <laughs> Wipes out everything I've done, thankfully, because I've usually done something stupid. And we're both wearing Monster Men swag. That's right. Because we look cool. You should look cool. Look for links in the show notes. <laughs> Jack, what's this episode about? Well, you animal. Ah. You texted me the other night and said, Hey, want to do one about animals attacking? To which I said, Okay. That's uh, that's behind the scenes. That's normally reserved for Patreon. That's right. So we thought long and hard about it, which means we went about our lives after that text and didn't think much. I happen to have watched an animal attack movie recently right then i was like oh perfect so all right so it works out and we have a few here there's more downstairs i just didn't feel like looking for it we're just gonna spitball over it, the top of our head it's just so many things and i can bring in the belfry what you can't see is samantha fox eyeing us i can see it it's inspiration i'm sucking my gut in <laughs> she i have her there and i have her right over here so you know she's around me at all times it's a bizarre thing but whatever samantha fox so, 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 so. So, let's start. Let's talk about animal attacks. I'm or nature hates you. When animals attack, we did this once years ago. Which it's been so long. Who knows? Right. We're probably talk about the same probably freaking well. movies. Nobody goes back and watches the old ones. So, <laughs> yeah, it's you know, this is a reimagining. Mm -hmm. It's a requel. A requel, not a prequel. Don't tell Brant that. <laughs> so. What's one of your favorites? Want me to talk about the one I watched? Talk about the one you watched. I was Which watching. Is not your favorite then? It's not my favorite. Uh, Jaws is my favorite. Yeah, that's definitely. And I don't think attack. we need to talk much about Jaws, except that in every one we watch, you're going to go, well, it basically steals the framework of Jaws. It steals riffs from Jaws. It takes that from Jaws. So we all know Jaws is the king daddy. Yeah. That's my favorite. I'm watching a um, rerun of Match Game. From the 70s. Ow, wow, oh, ow, and in ow, the ow. first chair, top next to Brett Summers. Right. Leslie Nielsen. The, the the big swinging dick at the time. And what movie is he promoting? Day of the Animals. <laughs> he was really promoting that on Match Game. Yes, I the new movie, Day, Day of the Animals. <laughs> so I'm like, oh. Wow. That's been in my queue for quite a while. <laughs> Watch it. How long had it been since you saw that movie? I've never seen that movie. You talked what? about it in the original one, yeah. and I bookmarked it, and I've always been like, someday i got to get, get around and watch this. Oh my god, it's a classic from the 70s. I don't know if there's a better movie to kick off this with than that movie. No, you're Christopher right. Christopher George. Mm -hmm. Linda Day George, who was... Little Jack had quite a little crush on her. Her hair was resplendent. Leslie Nielsen and uh, Richard Jekyll. Richard Jekyll. Who pops up in all of these. <laughs> no, it's almost like Animal's Attacks are really Richard Jekyll vehicles. It's a Richard Jekyll jam. <laughs> hey, like my jam juice. Jekyll jam juice. So the premise of this one is the um, ozone layers diminishing. Yes. And it's causing animals in a certain altitude to go crazy. Yeah. And Christopher George is taking a two helicopters full of people hiking and that happens to be where all the crazy animals are. Mm -hmm. So there's bear attacks, um, cougars, birds, birds. Was it eagles or hawks? I think it was hawks. I think it was hawks. That's, I stole that and I put it in Tortures of the Damned. Uh, probably snakes. Look, there was no greater animal attacking anyone in that movie than a shirtless Leslie Nielsen. Was That's what I was going to get to. Mind. Leslie Nielsen is like the bad guy in this movie. So if you've only seen him in like Airplane or Naked Gun, 
Or Mr. Magoo. <laughs> he starts off as an advertising executive guy who's pretty much a douche to start. Isn't but he a racist? Then, and it, he does, well, does say a lot of racist stuff. Yeah. There's a Native American guy, mm -hmm. which back then they called him Indian guy. Yeah. And he's calling him Kimosabi the whole time. <laughs> he's such a jerk. <laughs> so I'm going, oh, this movie would get so canceled. It would never see the light of day. But it's a time capsule into the way things were in the 70s. It's fine. Yeah, there are snakes because a guy goes into... He's getting chased by a dog with a little girl. Right. And he goes oh, to, yes. He gets into a car and there's all these snakes. That's right. Snakes just hanging out in the car waiting for him. Uh, and they... We're going to... This keeps happening in these movies. Close-ups of, like, uh, an animal doing nothing but just with ominous music. And then a close-up of a person, and then the animal. And you're supposed to be like, oh, the animal's attacking the person. because They just grab some silly. nature videos. Yeah. Wow, wow! I see someone <gasps> flap a skin hanging off their face. Oh, okay. But I didn't realize Christopher George was in it, or I would have been in... Because he, I mean, we'll get to Grizzly. Yeah. Shortly. Again. George and Jekyll. Jekyll. Back together again. Um, but you had, when we did our original one years ago, yeah. you were like, going off on this oh, one. I love that movie. Love that movie to death. Um, so I'm glad you finally saw it. I, and I was... Some of these I watch and I'm like, oh, I have seen this. And that one I was like, oh, I thought I might have seen this, but I hadn't. Oof. I think it's a Burt I. Gordon movie, if I'm correct. He does a lot of... Burt I. Gordon, who I believe is still alive at like 99. Wow, God bless. Did a lot of these uh, movies that we loved so much in the 60s and 70s. Uh, I wanted to bring up one that I... I saw this in the theater and I bought it recently. Prophecy. That's an animal movie? This is an animal movie. This is this fits right in. Because my thing is, so it's just nature, right? Gaia. Gaia striking out against us. So this, I saw this in the theater way back when. It's got Talia Shire. Adrian! It, Adrian! This basically is an inside-out bear. <laughs> that is terrorizing everybody. Because of the pollution. The pollution from the logging industry has destroyed the waters. And now there's this enormous, this bear is huge. And there are great scenes of this bear swatting people. And you watch them fly 30 feet in the air. And it's kind of gory when it needs to go there. Talia Shire, very pretty. She's all that in a bag of potato chips. Because remember Rocky, she was supposed to be kind of like the homely. I'm like, no, Talia Shire is actually very pretty. She's always the timid, she get in The Godfather too. She was Sonny's wife. <laughs> yes. So, she's kind of timid in this too. But, this movie also has the white man, the loggers, going against the Native Americans. Because they're, you know, they're screwing up their land and stuff. And there's some awesomely racist stuff in here too going on. And uh, there's a chainsaw fight. Oh, nice. Because these are, you know, loggers and stuff like that. Prophecy. Not the prophecy with Christopher Walken, which is good for what it is, but... I prefer prophecy for, you know, giant inside-out bears. I wouldn't have thought, but the cover makes it look like an alien movie. It looks like a thing, in an, like an embryo kind of thing. Yeah. But, well, I don't know, the bear does have babies. So, I mean, there you go. So you brought up a good point. Because another movie I watched was Frogs. That's right over here. Now, Frogs has... Killer cast. Um, Sam. Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. Young Sam Elliott. Yeah. Wade Garrett's getting old. <laughs> Joan Van Ark. Young Joan Van Ark. Smoke show. Like when she was in, um, what was she? Knott's Landing. Knott's Landing. Or, uh, did nothing for me. Like Charlene Tilton or um, well, some of the other, you know, Dallas Dynasty. I have address. a book of nothing but Victoria Principal photos. Victoria Principal. Over there. <laughs> a lot of them, like, were, you know, head turners. Yeah. Joan Van Ark never really turned my head. You watch this, you're like, oh. Yeah. Joan Van Ark. Yeah, she was really hot when she was young. A theme that runs throughout all these. This is another Nature Strikes Back movie. Mm. It's not just frogs. It's everything on this island. Snakes, birds. It's really not spiders. frogs. Frogs are kind of like <laughs> commanding the other animals, like the Budweiser frogs. Bud, wise. Er. <laughs> or the Hypnotoad from Futurama. Yeah. <laughs> Because or and, and, and towards the end they do swarm. Yeah, you but, don't really see them do much. One stops a record player. Like if you're waiting for frogs to do a lot of stuff, 
Frogs isn't your movie. But well, a turtle kills a woman. <laughs> but it's yeah. pollution. Yes. So I'm th- sitting there going, okay, there's a whole bunch with like the ozone layer. There's the pollution and other real life issues that you and I grew up that those were the basis for science fiction and horror movies. Yep. So we never really took them seriously. It was like, ha, that's never going to happen. <laughs> and it didn't. We polluted all this time. It's been fine. But the pollution, um, the echo consciousness of the 70s replaced the, um, the nuclear war stuff. Like the Adam Age uh, thing, so like movies like Them yeah. and Tarantula. Tarantula. First of all, Them is probably to me this is the best of the best. This is an absolutely great movie, and practical effects they don't hold up that well. It doesn't matter. But if you put yourself in your, I'm watching what is that, fifties? Fifties, yeah. This is absolutely amazing, especially once they get into the tunnels in Los Angeles and the kids and stuff. It's really kind of the noise. I mean, them, to me, I, I love ant movies. So them and Burt I. Gordon's Empire of the Ants with Joan Collins. That's the one where the ants, like, hypnotize people, right? Do they hypnotize people? What's the one There's like... This is the one where they're selling land. Like, Joan Van Ark is like... A, a, oh, no, there's another ant agent. movie where these ants, and they, like... Oh, no, no, these ants are controlling... You're right, the ants are controlling the town because they're kind of like working for the ants. Except not Joan Collins. She wasn't aware that this was happening. But yes, they, the ants have made people drones. You're absolutely correct. Good call. I love them and them and Empire of the Ants. I could watch them weekly. I was going to say daily. Yeah, that's too much. But I could watch them weekly. If you want to pay me money, I will watch them daily. And you can watch me just degrade as a human being as I go through through a whole year. Which people have done that? If people want to start paying us to watch movies? Like the same movie. <laughs> so didn't some guy do like Grown Ups? He'd watch Grown Ups every day. Oh my like god. I'd be like, well I got Selma Hayek to look at. So, But Tarantula, that's another Adam Age movie. Special effects. Great special effects. It's Jack Arnold who also did Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, this is one giant tarantula taking over this town. But who's not afraid of a tarantula? Come on. If there was one up here, I would lose my effing mind. There's tarantulas in um, frogs. Frogs, yes. <laughs> of course there are. Frogs. Hey, what's going to be the number one animal killing things? Not frogs. <laughs> They're just going to be there to close the thing out. But whatever. So for Adam Age movies, I love those two movies. I love... Um, what's that? The squid movie. Uh, Terror 20,000 Fathoms or something like that. Or it came from beneath the sea. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe it was it came from beneath the sea with the giant octopus with that Har- Ray Harryhausen. I used as a kid. I used Ray to love to watch that tentacle go whoop and just kill all those people running. You gotta watch the Ray Harryhausen documentary. Probably on Amazon. Unbelievable. Yes. Unbelievable. Or as the kids say, yes. But then if, if you go down the tarantula road. Yeah. Kingdom of the Spiders with Shatter. The man was getting bit by real tarantulas. They were dumping tarantulas on him. If you watch the movie, tarantulas are getting run over by cars. Oh, there are a lot of tarantulas were harmed in the making of that movie. Yeah. Uh, but he said they were auditioning, and uh, like they had to settle for whatever they could get for women in the movie because a lot of them just didn't want spiders on them. I don't blame them. Me neither. Um, and then, of course, you could, now Kingdom of the Spiders follows kind of the traditional. Nature Attacks, 70s yeah. framework. And then you graduate to arachnophobia, which creates this awesome horror comedy that just creeps the hell out of you. That's such a good movie. I haven't watched that in such a long time. That's a, that's a fun movie. It's a, I saw I that John the theater. That. So did I. Is that the Kari War? Is she no, the, that's Eight Legged Freaks. Eight Legged Freaks. Freaks. I always confuse the two. A great early CG movie. That, that was done well. Well, there's a scene, though, in that movie, A Legged Freaks. First of all, that's got Kari Wurr and young Scarlett Johansson. I'm like, wow, this is like major leagues, minor leagues. I don't even remember Scarlett Johansson. She's Kari Wurr's daughter in it. Oh, my God. I was like, this is like watching 
Ted Williams and Yastrzemski. And you're like, one's going to take the next thing. Yastrzemski. They got this kid coming up from the minors. He's going to take my place in left field. Are you going to say Kari Wurr is the Ted Williams of uh, oh, you got Animals it. Attack? He's not Linda Day George. I was talking from, like, the Maxim Top 100. <laughs> okay, I'll go with that. Um, no, I've lost. <laughs> So there's a scene before all the spiders mutate and get big. Uh -huh. This kid visits the the dude who's got like the spider farm, and right. all the spiders like attack right after he leaves. Mm -hmm. That's the creepiest thing for me because there's, I'm sure there's a lot of CG spiders, but you have yeah. a lot of terrariums with real spiders in them. I'm like, oh, I would lose my mind in that place. My kids have, since they were little, have wanted tarantulas and lizards, and I'm like, no. Here's a hamster. Oh, it's dead in two weeks. Well, we tried. All right. Bye, Fluffy. <laughs> Pour it out for you. We did have a beta fish for like four years. That that never attacked. However, we have a calico cat that we got. My, my oldest was afraid of all animals. Just terror. So I said, well, let's just adopt a cat. And she will have to get used to it. And I figured, oh, it's a cat. This cat hated her for like five years <laughs> and spent five years making her life miserable. But to the point where she realized... Oh, all she can do is, you know, bite my ankles and scratch me, and I can stomp her head if I wanted to. Not a lot of cat attack movies. You have to go supernatural with them. Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Not a whole lot of... No. You do have rabbits, Night of the Lepus. That's true. <laughs> that's... You have to, if... That's a trigger warning movie, I think, nowadays, because the beginning shows the actual purging of rabbits in Australia. And it's watching them hunt, like, chase down thousands of rabbits and just burn them and shoot them and stuff. Once you get over that, then it's fun. You want a good rabbit scary thing? Watch the cartoon of A Watership Down. Oh, God, it's so depressing. <laughs> um, Why was that? That was made for children when, when we were young. I was in high school. My friend told me about it. We went to see a double feature of... A Watership Down and Lord of the Rings. And it was like a the midnight cartoon? thing. Yes. Oh, that cartoon was great. So, first of all, the Lord of the Rings cartoon goes on forever. Where there's a whip, there is a way. That was Return of the King. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, well, what do I know? This was the Ralph Bashke with the rotoscoping and all that. But, so there was a Hobbit by, um, um, Rag and a Bass. <laughs> then, the wait, there is? It's a cartoon. I did not know this. And then there's Lord of the Rings by um, Bashki, and then Return of the King by Rankin and Bass again, in the same animation style as The Hobbit, with the I song. I did not realize that. So we saw we're going to watch. Um, my friends like it's a cartoon about rabbits. Watership down. I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah. I end up walking out like, I need to read that book. That was amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> I just want to go home and cry. Oh, it was so long though. We got to the Lord of the Rings. There's a like fight with orcs that goes on forever it's like it's three o'clock in the morning oh my god <laughs> is there good music at least like some there's not songs in it it's all like dun, 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 kind yeah of but still is, is that good it looks cool like... it only does two of the books i don't think i've seen it i just Own seen it. the i remember brother theodore was the voice of Gollum, i think or something i just remember he was a voice we anyway. have gone off track now nature's not attacking so cats him. dogs clearly got cujo a lot of dog stuff also like Supernatural. There's like the Hound of Hell, Zoltan or something like that. The yeah. What's Dracula's that? dog. There's that one with the dogs on an island. That's from like the aughts. I forget the name of it. Oh, that I never saw that one. It's, it's all right. Cujo's the best of the best there. And he's only attacking because, you know. He's got rabies. He's a little bit rabid. Now I saw, just this morning, Eaten Alive. Toby Hooper's follow-up movie from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Hey, Toby, what, what else you got in your bag of tricks? We well, got eaten alive. On Final Guys, we were recently reviewing the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm. And we were complaining that what's missing from this movie is the family. Yes. And Big time. So if you go back to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, crazy family. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Toby Hooper again, right? Mm-hmm. It doubles down on crazy family. Triples down. Like, it doesn't go, oh, this is just about Leatherface. He's part of an ensemble. Yeah. He's the Uncle Fester in the Adams family. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Most memorable one, but not the whole. No. Texas Chainsaw Next Generation with Matthew McConaughey. Again. 
Crazy family. Nuts. Toby Hooper. <laughs> tripling down on crazy family in this. This dude owns a hotel. Scary, crappy hotel. Right. Next to like a lake or a pond. And there's a giant crocodile imported from Africa. Of course. That every so often comes up to the porch and either pushes somebody in or it bites through the fence. Is it like Spot from the Monsters? Yes. On the stairs? <laughs> and at one point it chases a girl under the porch and suddenly this thing that is like the size of a Subaru is now like small and is chasing her like in stop motion almost oh for my a God. second. And then back outside it's giant again. But the movie is more about this crazy guy, Jed or something like that, who right. owns the hotel. And Robert England is like this scuzzy guy. He's at a whorehouse at the beginning. He's got to be a kid in this movie. He says that, you know the line, um, my name is Buck from... Um, and I like to... Yeah. He, Tarantino got that from this movie. Uh, well, I have, I have an editor who will tell you every movie that Tarantino has gotten, everything he's ever done from. Line by line. The... The crocodile in this movie is briefly in it. It's like when they say, oh, you know, Barlow was only in, only had like two minutes of screen time in Salem's Lot. Kind of like the thing here. Yeah. It makes an impression, but it's mostly about a really scuzzy dude who owns a hotel and like kills all the people with like a skive. Really? Total is it, where'd you grind house. I watched it on Plex. Oh, I don't have Plex. Set free. Plex is free, and I don't know exactly how Plex works, I because I, uh, I have my friend's Plex account, oh, and sometimes okay. movies show up on Plex, and I'm like, huh. Yeah, that sounds, I, I saw it, but we're talking almost 40 years ago, so no recollection of this movie whatsoever. I actually, after we filmed these, we watched movies, that would have been a perfect one to watch, because it's a, well, oh, and Carolyn Jones from The Adams Family is in it. Get out of here. We are going to watch Hellbender after this, so... Big ups to the Adams Family! What about s going back to snakes? You got yes. Anaconda. Anaconda is great, if for anything, for when it spits out the pride of Yonkers, John Voight, and he hits the deck, and he does that wink <laughs> before he dies. I would love to talk to the director and be like, who came up with the wink? That's gotta be. Gotta be John Boyd. Boyd. Yeah, that's totally. He's nuts. Another Kari Wurr movie. And J Lo. J Lo and Ice Owen Cube. Wilson. Wow. I can't believe we have an Anaconda here. I mean, what are we gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> Ice, Ice T and John Voight. Was it Ice T or Cube? And who Cube. Else? Cube, you're right. Yeah. Ice Cube. And um, the dude from Pulp Fiction. Um, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Red-haired guy. That's a really good cast. That's a fun movie. There's like a hundred Anaconda movies. Yeah, after that. Just, Blood Orchid. Just let it go after that. But that's a great movie. And in the same like time period, Lake Placid. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a gig. No. Betty White. Alligator. Betty White. Here's to you, Betty. You take it to us, from us too soon. So it was a TV movie, Alligator, in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Lake Placid. There's an Italian Eaten alive. Movie. There's a lot of alligator movies, by the way. Alligators don't scare me so much. There's tiny alligators in frogs. You know what alligator scares me? The one in Jackass, when they put the chicken in oh, steve -O's thong. That's my favorite scene of Jackass of all time. <laughs> Which I have to watch the new movie. When he falls off the line, and then he <laughs> jumps from gator to gator to get out. <laughs> I, I will tell you, if, if you need a break from horror, which we all do, you can't watch it all the time. And, you know, we're living on the brink of World War III right now. Yes. So you need some laughs, watch Jackass. E even if, you're re if you've been reluctant in the past, watch Jackass. You know how, like, if we're watching a movie, I might be more apt to laugh out loud because you're in the room with me and there's oh. somebody else there. Jackass is, like, the movie I think I've laughed out loud by myself oh, yeah. the most. When the movie was coming out, they were doing, like, um, marathons on MTV. I spent six hours in front of my television, drinking and laughing, mostly by myself. People would filter in and out of the room. And I'm like, I don't care if you're here or not. Just had a great time with that. A lot of nature's deck like bulls. They got, they got old sharks. They got, so. Sharks, I mean. 
They put Steve, I think that was Steve-O again. Richard Jekyll is in Mako, Jaws of Death from the 70s. Going back to Jekyll. What an epic career that guy had. He's in Grizzly with um, Christopher, George, Christopher George, which is absolutely Jaws with a grizzly bear. The best part was, I saw that movie at the Bainbridge Movie Theater in New York, in the Bronx, and the double feature was that and Jaws. And that was my first ever beheading. I never saw a head lopped oh, off wow. before. Because Grizzly, that Grizzly old, <laughs> takes care of that person's head. The omen. I think that came after. Well, for me, that came after. But I just remember seeing Grizzly. I was like, whoa. I was very excited as a kid. I remember seeing Grizzly on TV. Yeah, I was lucky enough to see it in a dingy theater that I think it had gone from legitimate to porn and back to some sort of legitimacy before it closed forever. Now, Grizzly has a sequel that was made years later that I have not seen. Grizzly? Grizzly 2, and I think it's Charlie Sheen and George Clooney are in it. What? And I almost watched it, but I watched Frogs instead. I think you, I think you did better for your soul. Because in the trailer, you hear George Clooney, but you don't see him. So right. it's like they must be in it for like one second each or something. Yeah. Is this Clooney from like Facts of Life time? Uh, must have been. Yeah. But what's that um bear movie where they go off like Backcountry, I think it's called? Oh, Backcountry's really good. Best bear attack on film. And now they say it's based on a true story, and I remember my wife when I should, my wife loves watching disaster movies and nature movies. So she saw that she's you have to watch this. Tonight we're watching them. All right, let's watch. I'm like, eh, whatever. Usually her movies suck. But I said, Let me, let's go with this. Love this. And I, I did some research. It's an amalgamation of 20 different bear attack stories. Oh, wow. So they picked and choose from all these different bear attacks. But, like, bears will eat their own children for the F of it. If they, I'm hungry. I'm just going to eat my kid over here. So bears are terrifying. That's why in the Poconos, you got to be careful when you well, walk out your door. Hang your garbage and your food when you camp. It pissed me off. I was just in the Poconos, and the last time we had been there, I, every time I went to bring out the garbage in the morning, a giant black bear would come trundling by the door. And you'd take one step out and go, oh, black bear going inside. Oh, oh wait. God. So I didn't see any bears this time, but the garbage areas, people just throw their bags on the ground. I'm like... Put it in the effing metal container that has a lock on it for a reason. So we all don't get killed. Even though black bears are gent gentler than brown, brown bears are crazy. And polar bears will kill everybody. Okay. I think we should scoop up every polar bear and dump them on Russia. Great idea. <laughs> dump them on Putin's house. <laughs> hey, Vladdy, we got a little gift for you. Killed by polar bears. There's a movie I want to see about here. Bees. Now, we remember Swarm. Swarm, and there was another one, like the Killer Bees. The Killer Bees. This is The Bees. This is one of my Vinegar Syndrome oh, purposes. This movie's batshit bonkers. Do not watch this alone. Like, watch this with a friend. Or watch it with, like, some jam juice. Or something that's going to loosen you up a little John bit. John Saxon. John Saxon is great. There is... John Carradine. Yeah. This is John Carradine. This is him towards the end of his life. He had bad arthritis. His fingers are pointing in nine different directions in this movie. I was like... He went that way. Yeah, I was like, man, I heard he drank, and if my hands were like that, I would drink too. This movie's crazy. This has, like, guerrilla warfare. I've never heard and of this movie. Yeah. By the way, here you go. You can, take, you can have uh, one of these, because it's the same thing. You're going home with one of the bees. Fun movie. Talking about a bee movie. The swarm is long. The swarm is long. Michael Caine. Yeah, Michael Caine. Uh, Good movie. That's another one where it follows the the beats of. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is it. But it's Irwin Allen, I think. I believe you're. So it has right. to be two and a half hours long. Didn't he do like Towering Inferno Towering and all Inferno that stuff? And yeah, Airport. Those big disaster movies. So it's it's Earthquake. a long movie. Earthquake. Incense around. <laughs> Remember those commercials? Roller coaster. Remember roller coaster? So sense around for you youngins. You turn on your TV, go to the channel, and then you go to your Victrola, your stereo. Your Victrola. 
Cola. <laughs> we have like one of those piece of furniture uh, stereos. And yeah, you and you lift it up. up the top, we had that too. And we turned on because those were the biggest speakers we had. Yeah. And it was like this the sound from the movie with enhanced rumbles. Yeah. So it was like surround sound before surround sound. Yeah, and in the movie theater, they just cranked it up a little bit louder. The Victrola. Mm -hmm. That reminds me, they used to do Blue Oyster Cult concerts at night. And my dad, because they would simulcast it on WNEW. NEW. And he would flip that freaking stereo on. It's like midnight, and you're just hearing Blue Oyster Cult singing, I'm burning for you, shaking the house. That was cool stuff back then. That's cool. But it was fun because it was a point My dad would television. do that with... Dean Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Houston. You ever hear that song, Houston, by him? Oh, you've heard it. If your dad's played Dean Martin, you've heard it. It's really bad. Like, Houston probably says, don't, please, don't associate this song with us. <laughs> he does the best Rudolph the Red as Reindeer. So Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> hey, hey, Rudy. Shiny nose. <laughs> We're all over the place. <laughs> Oh, do we have any more that we want to, like, gift people? I say go watch Day of the Animals right now. Food they, of the Gods. Food of the Gods. Food of the Gods as the a couple of guys from the San Francisco 49ers before the Super Bowl. And um, Willard and Ben. Willard, Ben. Rats. Great rat movies. <laughs> it's a great snake movie with Struther Martin and... Um, but that's a guy turning kind of into a snake. Yeah. So it's a little... A little different, but still, there's yeah. steak stuff. Dirk Benedict, right? Yeah. Starbuck. Did we see? No. Yeah, Starbuck. Starbuck, yeah. Before Katie Sackhoff. Oh, Katie Sackhoff was the best Starbuck ever. She's the best everything ever. That's why I watched, that's why I got hooked on Longmire. Uh, Originally, I was like, oh, Katie Sackhoff's in it? I'll watch it. And I was like, oh, I love this show. It's a great show. I miss that show. Yeah, that's all I got. That's enough for people. There were so many, by the way, but... I would say start in the 70s. That's like the 70s is definitely the place. Prime time. Because they were taking actual ecological fears and putting it in their horror movies. Where now we just, you know, we make them just to like... And people. they didn't have the technology or means for special effects. So they do the best they can. And it can be really fun to see what they were trying. Like, where goes some stock footage to a puppet hand... Night of the Lepus will be the most fun with Rory Calhoun and Leonard, not Leonard anymore, uh, DeForest Kelly. Oh. It's the most fun you will ever have. And it's giant rabbits. And watching them get electrocuted is one of the greatest moments in history. <laughs> All right. All right, so there we go. Animals attacks. Cheers, you animal, you filthy animals. Nature hates you, and nature will get back at you for every stupid thing you've done. Try to survive the night. We'll see you next time on Monster, Monster Men. Mm-hmm.